Okay, this is another video on how to make a stencil using an office fax machine. Now, you really need to know your fax machine <coughs> because some of them will require that you need paper in them. Some won't. Mine doesn't actually need any paper in it for it to take the stencil other than the sheet I'm going to put in. Also, <coughs> some will have you put the stencil facing outwards, whereas mine, you have to face it inwards. So you have to really know your fax machine before you actually start doing this. So do a few tests, um, just with regular paper, put a regular sheet in here, mark it, put your stencil in here and just make a regular copy, just so you know which way you need your stencil facing, which way you need your sheet up here facing. What you're going to need are some scissors. Tape, I use masking tape. This is actually automotive masking tape because it'll come off easily and it's not going to ruin your stencil. You're going to need an extra sheet of paper and your design. I don't, I'm pretty sure all fax machines are going to need to flip the design, at least with mine, um, because it's printing on the back of the carbon. It's not going through the top like a regular stencil copier will do, so you need to flip it. So if this was your design, you'd scan it and then print it, um, <coughs> like flipped. So whenever this is put on the stencil sheet, this leaf will be on this side and everything is going to be flipped because it prints on the back and then transfers to the stencil sheet. Uh, I recommend using Photoshop or something to um, darken your lines because the blacker, the darker the lines are, the better it's going to work. <coughs> um, you can also just use darker pencils like a 3B or a 2B or a 4B or something like that, and it'll work just as fine. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the protective iron sheet and just throw it in the garbage. I never keep them there completely and utterly useless. <coughs> then you're going to take your design you can either print off two copies and cut one out and just fold it over and cut around it, cut a square. Or you can just eyeball it. Oh, and, and I just mark it straight on the stencil paper. A little bit bigger than what I need. And the stencil paper is really cheap, so wasting a bit is not really an issue. And just mark it and then cut it out. in the back, put it in the garbage, <coughs> extra go with the way, and you take your extra sheet, it doesn't even matter if there's anything on it because it's not going to print directly on the sheet. <coughs> then you take your stencil and you line it up. I usually, if, it, if you're using the bottom one that has this little bit on the end, I usually put that on top. Just because it's easier for that to get caught. And it's easier to line it up if you've got straight on the bottom rather than a little bit back. This is a lot easier if you use a light box. Mine is actually broken right now and we need to have another one delivered. And once it's lined up, take your masking tape. This is Cantec brand, Canadian technical tape. And again, I don't know if this is all fax machines or if it's just mine, but I usually take the sides first. Because um, if I take the bottom first and then the sides, because the tape is facing down like this, while it's feeding through, the tape can lift up and get caught on the inside of the uh, fax machine and cause a jam. So I usually do the sides then the bottom to cover up the sides. And then just push it down really well so that it's not going to get caught. And like I said, you really need to know your fax machine. So for mine, 
the sheet has to be like this because it's going to grab it and feed it through like that. And then it's going to print here. So you put the sheet in. However, you need to do it for your fax machine, your stencil. Again, facing outwards if that's what your fax machine tells you to do. Copy, choose your resolution, and copy again. And it'll feed through. Don't rush it, just let it do its thing. nothing wrong with it and if you look at your actual sheet you've got again if you look the roses the, the leaf is on this side <coughs> tape mat. and again it does this is just spare sheet so if you rip the paper that's fine just make sure you don't rip your stencil here, the leaf, whenever you put it on the skin, will be on the opposite side. And this will be really, really dark. And if you use something like stencil stuff or a really good stencil solution, this stencil will last all day. It will never go. Because it was done <coughs> using it the proper method for this type of paper, which is buck heat. So it's a thermal back paper. <coughs> and you can do this with any thermal office fax machine. This is a Brother MFC 1970MC. Um, most print fax machines these days are thermal, so you can pretty much use any fax machine that's there. If your fax machine is dot matrix, you need to get hectograph paper, which uses pressure rather than heat. So you can even use a pencil and it'll work perfectly fine. But this is much, much faster than doing it by hand and makes them really bad if you're using thermal paper. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed my video. Check out my website. There will be a link in the description. Or check out the uh, apprentice forum that uh, some friends and I are, are doing. If you want to learn how to tattoo or if you just want... If you're a tattoo enthusiast, you can check it out too. And there's a section specifically for enthusiasts or collectors for design ideas, design requests, and stuff like that. So there will be a link for that in the description. And this is Nick Inc. from Uzumaki Corp Tattoos in Cornwall, Ontario, Canada. Thanks for watching and like, comment, and subscribe.